Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. It's strange that we're not meeting together on a Sunday. It's uh, a bit disconcerting. It's something um, we hope and pray it'll just be a, a one-time event due to what's going on there. Um, but I want to encourage you, even though we're not meeting together, to, to do a few different things this morning. One is to listen to some good worship music. Music has a way of setting our minds and our hearts upon Christ. We're actually posting a link on Slack to a, a new song that's written called Christ, Our Hope in Life and Death. Just a beautiful song and really fitting for all that's going on in our world. So we'd encourage you to take some time, listen to that, but really reflect upon it. Allow your heart to be moved um, by, the, by the worship music. Um, take some time today to do that. Let's certainly take some time to pray. Let's pray that the Lord stops the spread of this virus. And we know that it affects the most vulnerable in our society. And so we really, we want to pray out of love for them, out of compassion for neighbors and uh, people around us and people around the world who are being affected by this. Not only affecting them physically, but also affecting a lot of people financially. As different things are canceled, it affects people's livelihoods. And so people are worried and they're wondering about how they're going to pay for their next meal or uh, pay for their rent or mortgage. So let's pray that this ends soon and the measures being taken are effective in, in helping this, uh, this pandemic end. I pray for leaders, pray for our local and national leaders. There's a lot of decisions being made about how best to care um, for those underneath them. I pray for the leaders of our schools. I pray for the leaders of uh, businesses. We, we certainly would ask you to pray for the leaders of Redeemer as we try to make decisions about what's wise and what's best. There's a lot of unknown here, and so a lot of times you're trying to make the best decision as a leader without necessarily knowing all the details, and so we need extra wisdom in this time, but I hope you are praying, and I urge you to take some extra time today, a time you would normally spend in the worship gathering, really praying that God would, uh, God would end this, and that God would use this time for His glory, and then pray that God gives you eyes to see opportunities uh, to love others well. It's easy for us to be focused upon how this affects us, how this affects what we want to do in our plans. Um, I, I was supposed to leave just here shortly to, uh, you know, to head overseas to, to um, work with our friends and co laborers in Moldova and Ireland, and that's been canceled. And so it's easy to focus on what, you know, what's, what's this is doing to our plans, how it's affecting us. But I, I would urge you this morning as you pray and take some time as a family to pray that you think about, um, God help me to see how I can love others well, not to be focused on myself and how this, how this affects my plans, but to see people in need and be able to reach out and love to them. I would also encourage you, since it is Sunday, to give online. Um, we want to be faithful in the way that we're serving, serving and um, spreading the Great Commission, and that requires your uh, continued investment at the, at the at Redeemer in the ministry there. So go online and give. If you normally give in the offering, you can do that. I'm going to read the next few verses of 1 Peter, and as we do, I just want to point out some things that I hope will be helpful to us as a church as we think through these. First thing I want us to think about is that we bless God in every circumstance. So verse 3 begins, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So a lot of things have happened in this past few days that were unexpected. Things have been canceled. You know, there's something maybe you were looking forward to. I know a lot of our students were looking forward to events at their school, sports teams, and, and those have been canceled. And for some of them, that's their last opportunity. Seniors or those finishing at a certain school, that's, that's it. And all of a sudden, this opportunity is missed. And it would be easy to grow angry or cynical or bitter, but that's not what we do as, as followers of Christ. We bless God in everything. I can't help but think of Job, who after all of the all of the trials he faced, all the suffering he went through, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we bless God in everything. Not only that, we understand that nothing we face hinders God's care and plan for us. So it continues in 1 Peter 1, verse 3. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You understand, I know you understand this, right, that no virus affects God's care and plan for us, and nothing you face 
whether it's something that could happen to you directly or someone you know or someone you love, nothing hinders God's play, care and plan. I think about some of the words he uses. Born again to a living hope. I mean, no, nothing hinders that. So, so no financial effects of this. No stock market that's, that's going downhill. Uh, no sickness. No lack of medical resources. Nothing hinders the fact that you have been born again to a living hope that you have an inheritance that is imperishable, that is undefiled and unfading. And most importantly, it says that it's kept in heaven for you who are guarded by God. Like you are kept by God. You are guarded by God. And nothing you face in the last few days or you will face in the coming weeks hinders that. In verses 6 and 7, we see that suffering and trials, they reveal the genuineness of our faith. And so that gives us a cause to rejoice even in difficult circumstances. It says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I don't know what's hap- going to happen in the next week or two, things could change drastically worse they could change drastically better that's what we're praying for and hoping for but I don't know but here's one thing I know is that we'll see God's faithfulness through this and because we see God's faithfulness our faith will grow and it will be revealed to be pure and genuine before him and that will give us cause to rejoice even in the midst of difficulty and then finally in verses 8 and 9 here's what we see though we don't know what's happening we know Jesus and we love him It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let me just encourage you right now to press into Jesus. We've been told to practice social distancing. If you're an introvert, you you probably love hearing that, uh, that advice. So we're supposed to keep ourselves from too large of groups, keep distance between ourselves and other people as a way to protect them and love them. And so we're doing that. That's why we're not meeting this morning, is we're practicing this as, as we've been encouraged to. But let's make sure we don't distance ourselves from Jesus during this time. Like, in fact, we need to do the opposite. The, the more we distance ourselves from other people in this short window of time, the more we cling tightly to Jesus because we know him, because we, li- we love him. And it says, and when we do that, this is where we find inexpressible joy. Uh, Think about that. In the midst of suffering, because we know and love Jesus, we find inexpressible joy. So let me encourage you, Redeemer, press into Jesus, pray diligently, and let's trust him for what lies ahead.